St. John chapter 15, verse 4 and 5. Aren't you glad for the victory on today? Amen. They died and gave us the victory. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Uh, you can put some too many highs. Too many. Verse 4 reads, Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. But without me you can do nothing. Let's read that again together. Verse 4. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine no more can ye except ye abide in me i am the vine ye are the branches he that abideth in me and i in him the same bringeth forth much fruit but without me ye can do nothing let's pray lord we thank you for this day we thank you for this uh this hour we thank you for this first Sunday of the year, Lord, that we're here today, ready to receive, Lord, uh, the first fruit of the word that you would have for us, O oh God, to carry us through this year. We thank you, O oh God, for making uh, us after your image. We thank you, Lord, for creating us, Lord, to be connected to you. And I pray, O oh God, for your anointing, for your uh, presence, O oh God, to be amongst us, Lord. O oh God, I pray for clarity of thought, mind, and speech. Lord, give us open ears, Lord, to receive the word on today. Lord, let us not leave out of here the same way we came in. For we know your word is power. It's life-changing if we connect with it. We thank you. We praise you, O oh God. I pray the saints are edified and the sinners are saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. For a thought today, uh, I want to use I'm connected. I'm connected. St. John... Uh, we're in chapter 14, but when you, uh, 15, but when you look at chapter 14, it uh, leads us into chapter 15. And John 14 closes with uh, Jesus making the statement, uh, arise, and he says, let us go hence. And it's at the very end of chapter 14, which leads us into chapter 15. And it suggests the, that the next two chapters uh, may have been spoken on the way to the garden. And it's, it's possible that Jesus Christ and his disciples were, uh, were passing some vineyards uh, or perhaps even the, the temple itself uh, with its golden vine decorations, which was one of the decorations that was used on the temple. Uh, it's here when some believe that he gave the analogy of the vine and the branches. And when we look at that, uh, analogy the main truth Jesus is teaching uh, in this parable is the importance of abiding in him in order to bear fruit and we we'll look at that word we we'll look at abiding abiding it means to to remain abiding means to continue it means uh, to be held abiding means to be kept and so uh, Jesus is inviting everyone to connect with him to abide in him that a fruit may be produced. And so throughout uh, the first 11 verses, uh, the word fruit is used about approximately six times and uh, the word abide is used at least uh, 15 times in this chapter. And the main point of the teaching here again is fellowship. It's, it's relationship, uh, it's, it's connection. And it's the very thing that the enemy is fighting against uh, the church today. He's leading many to disconnect. He's leading many to refrain from fellowship. And so what we've got to understand is that that goes totally against what Jesus expects of the church. When we think about uh, connections, uh, I was even studying this out and I was just pondering on the word connection. We think of internet connections. We think of Wi-Fi uh, connections. We think of phone connections. We think of friends that we connect with. And, family members that uh, we connect with and then I thought to myself sometimes connections can be faulty 
Uh, sometimes there's, there's some of you that may, may be on your device right now uh, doing something you shouldn't be doing, but you may have a faulty connection because of the, the brick inside of the sanctuary. But sometimes connections are, are faulty. Wi-Fi connections can sometimes be uh, too weak for you to connect to a website. Phone connections are sometimes broken and you may experience drop calls or, or missed calls because the connection is broken. And so today uh, is the first Sunday of the year. And, and, and so let's get connected to Jesus this year. And let's get connected to Jesus and, and abide in him permanently that we may be able to produce fruit. Amen. In the kingdom of God. And so I want to encourage us today to, to get connected and stay connected, uh, to abide in the vine of Jesus Christ. Let's drop old habits. Let's uh, 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 stop doing the thing that pulls us away and let's stay connected. When you look at the vine, the Bible talks about I am the vine and ye are the branches. Uh, most vines in the natural sense, uh, uh, they are flowering plants. Uh, vines are typically a plant uh, with a growth habit of, of trailing uh, or climbing stems is what they're called. Vines uh, are able to grow uh, through some of the most uh, tremendous circumstances. They're able to grow in, uh, in the shade of darkness. They're able to even grow in uh, the heat of the full sun. Uh, vines have a term which is called plasticity. And the plasticity of a vine and its ability to climb, to toil, allows the vine to grow uh, out of reach of herbivores. If you know herbivores are things that kill or eat plants. They're called plant eaters. And, but the plasticity of the vine allows it to extend to a depth or a height that goes beyond the plant eater or the herbivore that would desire to eat it. Climbing vines, as some are called, uh, they possess many uh, unique characteristics. Vines, uh, uh, as, even as I studied, I found out things that I didn't know, but uh, they're able uh, to respond to changes in their environment. Uh, climbing vines have a unique ability in which they can induce uh, a chemical defense uh, when it's threatened. And vines can, uh, according to studies, they can sense being touched. So when it can sense being touched by a threat, it can induce or produce a chemical agent. Amen. And, and what this agent does, it, it stuns the, the predator. It stuns the herbivore. And uh, what it does, it, uh, the toxin can reduce the herbivore's ability to even digest it. It's how powerful and how strong uh, the vine is. And, uh, the twisting vine is another type of vine, and when it's threatened, it it's, has the ability and the capacity to increase its twining to strengthen itself, uh, to make itself stronger and tighter so that uh, the herbivore can't impact it and destroy it. And so these vines are successful at, at warding off threats and attacks and uh, surviving during extreme conditions because uh, the success of the branch depends upon the survival of the vine. If the vine is destroyed, the branch is destroyed. So uh, as it is in the natural, we look at it in a spiritual sense. And so as the true vine, being Jesus Christ, stands strong, uh, he assures that every branch that's connected to him receives everything that it needs. Amen. I believe I preach right there. That's the sermon right there. Amen. Because, because the true vine can ward off any attack. The, the true vine cannot be destroyed. And, and so as long as I stay connected to the vine, my branch will produce fruit. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God. And so uh, we have to understand then, and there, there's a relationship between vine and branch. And uh, the relationship between the vine and the branch is one uh, of unity. So what we've got to understand is that uh, we, uh, where the branches are, or the believers, where the believers are uh, taken care of by the sustenance of the vine, which is Jesus Christ. And that's the vine's job. The vine's responsibility is to send nutrients up to the branch. 
And I'm glad today uh, that now I understand that I'm connected to something that's able to sustain me through my lifetime. Amen. Because what Jesus sends you, no devil in hell can stop the flow. Amen. And so, so better understanding the significance of the vine. Now, we, we should all understand the importance of abiding in the true vine. Amen. I, I, I've never had a thought in the mind set to backslide and leave God. Amen. I, I've made my mind up that, that I'm going to stay connected to Christ see, because I need the sustenance that he provides in order to make it day by day. Amen. And so Jesus says, abide in me and I in you. He says, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine and he says no more can you except you abide in me and, and so we talked about abiding and again meaning i'm continuously connected to jesus christ uh, abiding in the, the exercising of faith and exercising of love and, and so i'm holding on to him with all my heart amen what am i doing i'm connecting to him amen and this in turn when i'm connected allows me to receive the grace that he offers it it allows me to receive the strength and the nourishment that i need from him and so what the devil comes to do is he tries to present an illusion that there's a better strength, there's a better nourishment, that there's a better kind of love for you. And so he introduces falseness to your mind. He introduces falseness, amen, uh, to your thoughts, amen, to think, make you think that there's a better vine somewhere else. My God, but you've got to know today we're being informed that the only true nutrient and nourishment comes from the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. Somebody shout glory. Uh, so church, don't let tests and trials uh, turn you aside from the truth, amen. If you're connected to the true vine, you're connected to truth. Uh, everything else is a lie. Everything else outside of Christ, amen, that, that tries to present itself as deity is false, amen. So you're connected to the real thing, uh, amen. I've been places uh, uh, before where, where I, I love steak, and I've been to places where uh, the steak uh, has been uh, not so great, amen. It's a, a low grade is what they call it steak but then I've been to places where uh, the steak was a high grade steak uh, oh I can tell the difference amen and when you step off the true vine amen you'll be able to tell the difference amen uh, you'll know amen this vine over here is killing me uh, my god this thing over here is destroying me uh, you gotta learn to disconnect from something that's false uh, and connect to the true vine somebody shout hallelujah my God, abiding in me and I in you when it's accomplished signifies a continual intimate relationship. And that's what we all should want with Christ, a, a continual intimate relationship, amen, where he's sending nutrients up to my branch and my branch is producing fruit. That's relationship over and over again. I can't, uh, I can't put that into a compromise. I can't put that into a position where it may stop because I love what I feel. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I love what I feel on the vine. Love what I feel in the tree. Love what my fruit produce, my branch produces. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? My God. And so we've got to learn, my God, to continually abide in him. I love my intimate relationship with my wife, but I love an intimate relationship with Jesus. My God, and I'm going to tell you today, if you can have both of them, you got the, both, the best of everything. My God. And so, so here we find out that we, we that there's, a, there's, a, there's a nugget here I'd like to share. The text talks about the end. He buy in me. And he says, and I in you. And he says, except it abide in the vine. Except you abide in in me and, and so here the in terminology is what i want to talk about for a second because the in termina uh, terminology in the text it harks back to old testament covenant theology here uh, in prophetic text when uh, god's desire is to dwell among his people Amen. And so Jesus was presenting uh, the concept of dwelling among, amen, and from the Old Testament. And he's presenting it to us today in John as dwelling in him. And so we find that the phrase, I in them, is filled with, really with covenantal tones. It, it's, it stems back to the Old Testament. After giving of the law at Sinai, God came down to dwell in 
in the midst of Israel and in the tabernacle. And so what we find is as they move toward the promised uh, land that God had promised them, frequently he assured his people that he was in their midst. Uh, and so what we see here in Exodus chapter 25, God gives instructions to Moses and, and instructions are given for the erection of the tabernacle. And he tells Moses, let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. Uh, and so he he picks it up and he tells us that I will dwell among the children of Israel and will be their God. Uh, God was trying to get all up in them even back in these days. Uh, uh, and so in Ezekiel, I love the way he spells it out. He says, and the heathen shall know that I, the Lord, do sanctify Israel. He says, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst uh, of them forevermore. Uh, and so God's desire, church, uh, is not just to be around you. God's desire is not just to be uh, somewhere near you, but God said, I want to be not just even among you, I want to dwell in you. Uh, somebody thank God today for dwelling in you. My God, he, now because of the death of Christ on the cross, uh, the spirit of Christ now dwells in us. Uh, hallelujah. And so he's no longer among you, now he's in in you. Uh, and Paul helps us to understand this concept in 1 Corinthians where he says, know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you. Uh, so God made a transition over time from dwelling among his people to dwelling in his people. Aren't you glad he made his way from being among to being in you? My God. And so now I feel him all on the inside. Amen. I know he's there because I speak with utterances uh, uh, that sometimes I can't even understand. Uh, I know he's inside of me because uh, when I would do evil, uh, the Holy Ghost says, stop it and do what's right. Uh, Anybody know what I'm talking about today? It's not because of your own goodness. It's because you're connected. Somebody shout hallelujah. My God, and so our text today, it strongly expresses uh, the necessity of staying connected to Jesus Christ. Uh, let this be the last time ever in your life uh, that you disconnect yourself from Christ. Uh, not another day, an hour, or a second in your lifetime. Uh, make your mind up today uh, that by the time I step out of the doors of Christ Temple Church, uh, I'll never be disconnected again. Uh, I'll never drop another call. Uh, I'll never drop a or be disconnected from my Savior. Where he leads me, I will follow. What he tells me to do, I will do it. When he says submit and obey, I'll submit and obey. When he says be in fellowship, I'll be there because I'm connected. Somebody shout glory. I'm connected today. And so the branch church, it partakes or receives the nature of the tree. And that's what the branch does. The branch doesn't just do its own thing, but it takes on or receives the nature of the tree. In other words, as the branch of is Christ, you receive the nature of Christ. Because you're connected to him. You being an apple tree can't be connected to a parent tree and think you're going to produce apples. It doesn't work that way. If I'm connected to a pear tree, I'm going to produce pears. If I'm connected to an apple tree, I'm going to produce apples because the nourishment that I receive, I begin to take on the nature of the tree. And so now because I'm connected to Christ, I take on the nature of Christ. I take on his love. That's why I'm able to love you even when you despite use me. That's why I take on his care. The Bible says, cast your cares on him, for he cares for you. And so we take on a caring nature. Oh, I take on his tenderness. Amen. I have a nature of tenderness. And that's why saints don't go off on one another. Because we're tender with one another. Because Christ is tender in his nature. And so Jesus is saying here, whenever the conditions that I I have spoken are fulfilled. Uh, whenever the things come together uh, that I say should come together, uh, he says, wherever there are individuals connected and abiding in me, uh, they reap the full benefits uh, and every advantage uh, of life that stems forth from me. Uh, uh, so when I'm connected to Jesus, uh, everything about him, uh, I've got access to it. Uh, 
Somebody thank God for your access today uh, because you're connected to Jesus. Uh, uh, everything Jesus says is in me. Uh, I'll offer to you. Uh, it's coming through my vine. Uh, I'm sending it up uh, and it's coming to a branch near you. Uh, somebody reach up and grab some of it. Uh, Jesus is sending some nutrients to Christ's temple. Uh, he's sending you some love uh, because you felt like you couldn't be loved. Uh, he's sending you some healing because uh, the doctors gave up on you. Uh, thank God uh, for the nutrients uh, of the true vine. My God, I feel like preaching today. Got to understand here now. It's the disjointed, broken branch, withered leaf folks that are disconnected from the vine that finds themselves struggling all the time. Find yourself always struggling. That's because you're disconnected. You're struggling with stuff because you're disconnected from the vine. Pick yourself up. It's a new year. Brush that stuff off. Off, uh, that you picked up along the way uh, and get back to the true vine. Slap your neighbor with a high five uh, and tell them, neighbor, uh, stay on the vine. Uh, stay there. Uh, don't get disconnected uh, uh, while the connected folks, uh, uh, while you're struggling being disconnected uh, and disjointed, uh, the connected folks uh, are bringing forth some fruit. Uh, uh, not just some, uh, but they're bringing forth much fruit. Uh, uh, so I've got to understand here uh, that I'm commissioned uh, to bring forth some fruit. Uh, when I'm connected, it makes me a partaker of the divine nature of Jesus Christ. Uh, uh, what happens there? Uh, what do you mean that I become a partaker? Uh, that means everything Jesus has to offer, uh, I can operate in it. Uh, I become wise with his wisdom. Uh, uh, because he's sending up wisdom through the vine. Uh, that's why the Bible says if any of you uh, lack wisdom, uh, he says, let him ask of God uh, that giveth liberally uh, and abradeth not. Uh, so if I need some wisdom, Wisdom. I can shout out down the vine. I need some wisdom. Can you send some up? And Jesus is sending it up through the vine. If you ask for it, when I'm connected to him, I become powerful in his might, not my own. When I'm connected, I become pure through his holiness, not my own. All of the benefits of being connected. It's a great place to be, but you got to get there. Uh, it's a great place to reside, uh, but you got to stay there. Uh, and so what we have to understand here, uh, mm, the text is letting us know, uh, is that we got to be connected for a reason. Uh, one is to produce the fruit. Uh, and the second thing uh, is that we now understand, uh, apart from the vine, uh, we can do nothing. Can't do it. Can't beat a drum uh, apart from Christ. Uh, can't teach a lesson uh, apart from Christ. Uh, I said earlier that connections are sometimes broken. Uh, whether it's through deception, uh, uh, whether it's through lies, whether uh, it's through weariness or disobedience, uh, whether it's through a lack of commitment, uh, connections are sometimes broken. Uh, a believer who fails to abide in Christ uh, uh, becomes like a useless branch. Uh, ever seen a dead branch on a tree? Uh, you know it ain't doing nothing. Uh, it's the same way all the time. Uh, it's dead looking. Uh, it's dreary looking. Uh, you really want to cut it down. Uh, it's like the salt that loses its taste uh, and it's good for nothing. Uh, uh, the saint who fails to use the gifts uh, and opportunities that God has given him, uh, the saint that does not produce fruit, uh, stands to lose the gifts that God has given. Uh, oh, oh my God. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? Uh, I'm trying to tell you, uh, if you've got the gift of healing uh, and you're not laying hands in healing, uh, God can strip that gift away. Uh, I'm trying to tell you, uh, if you've got the gift of helps uh, and you're not helping anybody, uh, God can take the gift of helps. Uh, the Bible helps us out with this in 2 John. Uh, he says, look to yourselves. Uh, he says that we lose not those things uh, which we have wrought. Uh, uh, the things that you've done. Uh, the things that God has given. Uh, and so severed from Christ, uh, a branch can't affect anything. Uh, can't do nothing. Uh, cut a branch down from a tree. Uh, 
lay it on the ground for a while. It won't do anything. It can't affect anything. The only thing it can do in that state is to die. It has no independent fruitfulness and stability of its own because it's disconnected itself from the vine. All the branches' powers are derived from a supernatural source. My God, and are dependent upon the faithfulness of Jesus Christ. And so you need the vine to provide every nutrient to your branch. That's why we got to quit trying to work it out because God's already figured it out. You got to quit trying to make the way because God's already made the way. It is possible for a carnal Christian church. It is possible for a carnal Christian to produce works. That's right. Anybody can start preaching. Anybody. I used to preach when I was a kid. Anybody can preach. You can grab a man a stick and, uh, and use it as a microphone in the backyard. Anybody, amen, can, can start preaching. Anybody can start a church. They can do works. Anybody uh, can say a prayer. Uh, anybody can do the works. Uh, anybody can lay hands on somebody. Uh, anybody can do the works. But only a spirit-filled, connected believer can bear lasting fruit. Uh, only a spirit-filled, connected believer can bring about a fruit produced for the kingdom of God. Uh, mm, what are you saying, Pat? Look at the vagabond Jews uh, in the book of Acts. Non-spirit-filled. Uh, the Bible calls them exorcists. Uh, uh, called out the name of Jesus uh, over folks that was possessed with devils. Uh, now we know what happens with that story. Uh, they said, uh, uh, we do it in the name uh, of Jesus whom Paul knows. Uh, uh, they were saying, they were doing the works. Uh, uh, but they were not connected to the true vine. Uh, and so you know the story. The Bible says they were beaten and wounded. Uh, uh, they had no connection. Uh, so go out and preach it you want to uh, without a connection uh, go out and try to start something on your own uh, without a connection uh, go out and try to operate uh, of spiritual authority uh, without being connected to the vine uh, you'll soon find yourself wounded and broken uh, uh, so we understand now uh, that when it came to Paul uh, because they said Paul we know uh, and Jesus we know uh, but who are you uh, they knew Paul because Paul was connected uh, matter of fact the Bible lets us know that Paul uh, the Bible Bible says God wrote special miracles uh, by the hands of Paul. Uh, from his body, the Bible says, uh, uh, were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs uh, and aprons, uh, and the diseases uh, departed from them, uh, and the evil spirits went out. Uh, that's the difference. Uh, the vagabond Jews had no connection. Uh, they left out of there beaten and wounded. Uh, and here comes Paul, uh, who's connected to the vine. Uh, didn't have to be there himself, uh, but it's very anchoring. Uh, and and his handkerchief uh, was enough to heal the sick. Uh, it was enough to cast out devils. Uh, somebody shout, I'm connected. I'm connected today. Uh, my God, I wait, uh, thank God today uh, for the nutrients from the vine uh, that enable us to do what we do. Uh, these words, church, uh, uh, in our text today, St. John, uh, they're not addressed to the sinner man, uh, uh, but to believers who have to learn uh, their constant need of spiritual contact with God. Uh, uh, you've got to understand this, church. Uh, uh, you can't step out there by yourself. Uh, let an apostle or a prophet uh, that a pastor or a teacher uh, or an evangelist, my God, uh, even a saint themselves, uh, sever themselves from Christ uh, and attempt to live on their own reputation. Uh, attempt a man to do things over their own intellect uh, uh, or their own authority. Uh, they'll soon find out uh, that the scripture is true, uh, that without Christ, uh, you can do nothing. Uh, somebody shout hallelujah. And I'm about to wrap this one up, y'all, because I'm coughing. <clears throat> Bearing fruit here. Uh, we got to understand here now. Uh, we understand the vine. Uh, we understand the branch. Uh, but what are we uh, uh, to produce here? Uh, he says, I am the vine and you are the branches. Uh, he that abides in me uh, and I in him, he says, the same brings forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. Uh, and so I want us to get this principle here. Uh, I want us to understand this before we leave today. Uh, that fruitfulness uh, is God's primary creative and redemptive purpose. Uh, uh, let me say that again here. Uh, fruitfulness, uh, fruit production is God's primary creative uh, and redemptive purpose. Uh, everything that God created uh, is supposed to produce. 
So I'll say it again. Everything that God created is supposed to produce. My God, the Bible declares that when it came to man in Genesis 1, and he created man, he commanded them to produce. The Bible says, and God blessed them. God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And not just do that, he says, and have dominion over it. Genesis, he says in verse 11, and God said, not only man, man is to produce. Not only is the woman to produce, but he now moves on. And God said, he says, let the earth bring forth grass. In other words, I'm commanding everything to produce. I'm going to need the earth to spit some grass up. He says, the herb yielding seed, you've got to produce. He says, the fruit tree yielding fruit after its own kind. The grass has got to produce. The seed has got to produce. The tree has got to produce. Uh, he said whose seed is in itself. Uh, God says I put it in you. Uh, I put a seed of production in you. Uh, I put a seed of fruitfulness in you. Uh, if you got the Holy Ghost uh, you got the ability uh, to produce. My God, you got to produce. And I like the way God ends it. The Bible says God saw it and it was good. God put everything in here for a purpose. You're sitting here today under the sound of my voice. You are a producer. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, what have you produced lately? Go ahead and ask him. Some of y'all been sitting around not producing nothing. But some of y'all been on the field producing like you're supposed to uh, this is a new year uh, this is a new season uh, god said everything i put on the earth uh, it's got to produce uh, are you ready church uh, to throw aside uh, every weight uh, every sin uh, that's so easily beset you uh, it's time to produce it's time to produce. Uh, God said, uh, my God, here, uh, how do you know that, Pastor? Uh, well, what's in me? Uh, what am I supposed to bring forth? Uh, he picks it up in Isaiah. Uh, and I love here uh, the poetic imagery he uses. Uh, he says, he shall cause them uh, that come out of Jacob uh, to take wood. Uh, and so now, church, uh, you know that Jacob uh, was Israel. Uh, and Israel was the church in the wilderness. Uh, and so now we are uh, the seed of Abraham by faith. Uh, and so now uh, the church in the wilderness uh, is the New Testament church saints today. Uh, and so the Bible declares here uh, that he shall cause them uh, to come out of Jacob uh, and to take wood. Uh, catch this. Uh, and then he says, Israel uh, shall blossom uh, and bud uh, and fill uh, the face of the world. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, when I read that, I got happy. Uh, he says, Israel shall blossom uh, and bud uh, and fill the face of the world huh, with fruit. Huh? And so now understand church, huh? it's time to connect huh, so that we can do two things. Huh? Blossom huh, and bud. Huh? It's time to blossom huh, and bud because huh? I'm connected to the vine. Huh? It's time to bud. Huh? A bud church. Huh? It's an undeveloped huh, embryonic uh, uh, shoot huh? uh, where the bud is. Uh, uh, and at the appointed time, uh, what the bud does, uh, it blossoms into a flower. And so now, church, the bud is in you. Some of you have been standing in a bud position. Some of us have been there in the ready, set position. You've been on the vine. The nutrients have been coming. you swelled up over and over. And so God said, it's time to go from budding to blossoming. I wonder today if somebody's ready to blossom and bud blossom and bud over and over again blossom and produce fruit blossom and give God what he asked for and so what God does he comes by and he says you've been doing good I'm gonna take your fruit I'm gonna prune you so you can bud again and give me some more so I may be in a bud season or I may be in a blossom season. Huh? Long as I'm connected to the vine. Huh? I'm either blossoming baby. Huh? Or I'm in a bud state. Huh? Wherever you are. Huh? 
Give God praise uh, for being uh, the vine that he is. Uh, give God praise uh, for your connection. Uh, I'm a winner uh, when I'm connected. Uh, the only way I lose uh, is if I disconnect. Uh, but when I'm connected, uh, I'm entitled uh, to every promise of God. Uh, when I'm connected, uh, I don't have to worry uh, about my past. Uh, coming back to haunt me the past is already written the ink is already dry forget about it baby let it go you can't change it just keep moving forward just stay connected if you're connected you've got jesus get connected to ministry get connected to your brother Get connected to your sister. It's time to connect to the true vine. My God, grace runs from the vine of Christ to the veins of my branches. Mercy runs from the veins of Christ to the veins of my branches. Love runs from his vine up to my branches. I'm connected to his omnipotence. I'm connected to his omniscience. I'm connected to his greatness. I'm connected to his royalty. I'm connected to his deity. I'm connected to his power. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I'm connected. Grab your neighbor and connect with him. Grab him up. Everything that's in me flows to you because uh, we're connected uh, to the vine uh, the true vine uh, i'm connected uh, don't let go uh, hold on uh, hold on to jesus uh, you're connected uh, to his power source uh, when the enemy comes against you uh, that ain't the time to jump ship uh, stay connected uh, stay attached uh, stay in his bosom uh, stay in his presence uh, stay connected uh, don't give up. Help is on the way. The devil's coming as a roaring lion, but it doesn't matter. I'm connected. Sickness may come, but I'm connected. Poverty may come, but I'm connected. Whatever you do, you speak it. Whatever it is, you say it. I'm connected. I'm a child of God. I'm a king's king. I'm a royal priesthood. I'm a chosen generation. Why? Because I'm connected. Somebody shout glory. I'm connected. Hallelujah. That's the word for the year. We created to connect. Everything God produced. Everything God created, he created it to produce. So let the singer sing. Let the musicians play. Let the deacons and the deaconess serve. Let us all do what God is putting us to do to produce. Look at your neighbor and say, get off your behind and produce. The devil wants you to sit back in contentment. Think, ah, they got it. I ain't got to do nothing. They got enough help. But what is he put in you? You got a seed in you that has to produce. Don't get cut off at a bud. You, you were you ready. You were almost ready. You were, you were ready. To, you were in a budding state. But because you stayed there. God had to cut you off at the, at the branch so that something else could come and grow in your place. I refuse to be replaced. I'm staying connected. Abide in me. If I abide in you, he wants to reside in us and we reside in him. Stay connected, church. Don't go on no hiatus. Go in times of disappearance and times of hiding. That's the folks that's testifying against the mob. I'm not looking for that kind of safe house. I'm looking for this, this kind of safe house. The church of Jesus Christ is my safe house. This is where I'm connected. 
I get everything I need in this safe house. 2018, church, it's a new year. We all have to operate with the mindset, I'm connected. I'm not going to let anything separate me from my connection. Keep that in mind as you go through this new year. Blossom and bud, blossom and bud, blossom and bud. I want to be producing, and I want to be preparing to produce. Producing, preparing to produce, because I'm connected to Jesus. God bless you.